the way in which we carry ourselves, it's the way we treat other people. I think Hoosier hospitality is essentially the golden rule. Residents of Indiana pride themselves on Hoosier hospitality, a term used to describe the polite, caring, and friendly residents of Indiana. Growing up, and like as in, in a poor neighborhood and stuff, I noticed that there wasn't any grocery stores or anything close for poor people that can walk to or get to easily. Um, if you do want to go somewhere, you have to catch the bus. And the bus system here kind of makes it hard for you to go to a grocery store without having to go all the way downtown and then going back, going right back up. The circumstances that Kyra described are all major contributing factors to what the United States Department of Agriculture has defined as a food desert. And the most shocking part of this all? Indianapolis has been ranked the worst urban food desert in the United States of America. Oftentimes where there are food deserts, people um, have to take taxis or buses if they have access to those things. Or they have to go to gas stations to get their food or convenience stores. And that presents to me an untenable option because you're getting food that's marked up considerably and you're also getting food that has spoilage issues and other things and that's simply unhealthy. A lot of these people survive on one meal a day and some less and it's not so bad when it's just them but you see the homeless children and teenagers and you know already that they don't stand a chance and uh, you know what's the phrase a snowball's chance in hell. Um, on college where I live now, um, to get to the grocery store, you have to, well my friend, luckily my friend has a car, but for other people they would have to like catch two buses to get to the grocery store. Um, it's probably about, it's literally like 15 minutes away from the house, but like I said, driving dishes, but if somebody wants to walk, it's going to be a long way, or if you want to catch the bus, you have to catch two buses, so it's really not a good area. It's not really an area where people can get food. Like I said, it's like a family dollar and a dollar general. So you really don't have an option to get good food, quality food for, for poor people or for children at that. After the passage of Indiana's Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or RIFRA, in 2015, citizens and businesses alike protested the policy on the basis of Hoosier hospitality. Well, I think the reality is that in our state, RIFRA did a lot of damage in terms of our reputation. But there have been folks of goodwill from the LGBT community, from the African American community, from the interfaith community, from the Latino community, and the larger community as a whole who have stood up and said, we will not stand by any administration uh, that promotes bigotry or any legislature that promotes bigotry. And that's encouraging because you had Democrats, Republicans, independents, libertarians who are saying this does not represent who's your values and this isn't who we are as Americans. The whole Indy welcomes all thing, I think that's the best who's your hospitality that I've experienced here in Indianapolis because um, Indianapolis is not really a good, I don't think it's a good place where they welcome everyone. I think they try to like keep everyone in the same, like maybe white people over here, black people over here, Hispanic people over here, but I think now, like back in the day they used to do that, but now we're becoming more vocal about things that's happening in the city, that people are more coming together. So I think now, right now, it's been, Hoosier Hospitality has been, has gotten way better than it was before. So the whole welcome all thing was, is a really good, a really good step for Hoosier Hospitality. So if Hoosier Hospitality is such an important value, how come more aren't taking action to feed those who don't have access to grocery stores or other healthy food options? Indiana is uh, a very proud state, number one. Number two, it has a phenomenal education system. The standard of living is very high. And the, uh, the expectation of one another is very high. People expect others to be able to jump the same bar that they've set for themselves. Well, I think the same kind of righteous indignation that you saw with the RIFRA uh, pushback, the same kind of concern that people show, not only statewide, but nationally, even internationally, is what we have to do in terms of eradicating not only global poverty, but hunger in the United States of America. Some Hoosiers are already taking action toward reclaiming the hospitable title that they are so well known for. 
Well, you know, I have, um, I have always been a proponent of equality. I'm a co-founder of the Congressional LGBT Caucus. I introduced a Food Deserts Act uh, recently that attempts to establish revolving funds uh, or banks, if you will, in every state uh, for nonprofits and NGOs, particularly uh, even even for-profit ventures, to set up uh, grocery stores that will fill the needs in urban centers and rural communities uh, where there's a deficit in terms of getting healthy food and getting food that is sustainable. Um, yes, I th there's a actually a community center that we uh, volunteer for called KI, the Kepra Institute, and they're starting to get where we, we can like start making our own farms and areas where like you see abandoned homes or just land and we're trying to get to be able to get people involved and start planning their own stuff as well um people like me like i talked to are just like me they had the same struggle like don't have a car or don't have money to get on the bus to go to the store or something like that so i talked to the same people that i talked to are just like me in that in that aspect of the way so we're out of Bainbridge Christian Church, and so what we do on every other week is uh, my wife, Sue, uh, we typically feed uh, anywhere from 150 to 250 people right here at the library across on St. Clair Street. Well, there are a lot of nonprofits. There are gleaners, there are Meals on Wheels. There are so many nonprofit groups uh, that are already doing this great work. As legislators and as a legislator, my job is to provide, to provide a legislative remedy, and that's what we're attempting to do with this piece of legislation. But they can't do it alone. All of us have our own unique stories on how we got where we're at in this day and age. But, but what I want to point out is that you have to take the time to, to be able to reach out and give others the opportunity to have just a chance. I just want to see Indianapolis. I think I just want to see less bigotry in Indianapolis because it's a lot of that. So I want to see less bigotry and more people come together uh, like RIFRA, LGBT community, Black Lives Matter, um, uh, Undocumented Youth Association, other just people of color and RIFRA and white people just come together so we can demolish so we can dismantle the system that is destroying our destroying our communities as we speak right now so i guess that's all i have to add really <laughs>